Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be tasting some food items that I found at my local Ikea. Yes, Ikea, the furniture store. They also sell food there. They have a little cafeteria area where you can eat their Swedish meatballs, but they also have a pantry area where you can buy ready-made items. And I always love checking it out. Now, this is the first time I have been back in the actual store since pandemic. I have purchased some things online, but being in the actual store, this was the first time. And it was a lot of fun to be back. My kids used to love going there when they were little. They loved eating the pasta and sauce up in the little restaurant area but today I'm gonna to be tasting items that I found in the prepackaged foods now specifically I went for the pick and mix now this is taking off a bit on the Tiki Talks there's a shop in New York I believe it's called Bonbon bon, that sells Swedish style pick and mix candies lots and lots of licorice it tends to be licorice heavy either salty, sweet, they have lots of sour candies, lots of gumdrops. And I remember years ago that Ikea also had a bin bulk candy area. And so I was hoping with my fingers crossed that they would still have it. And so I went and sadly, they no longer have the bulk candies, but they still have the candies, but now they are prepackaged and wrapped. Now, after meeting lovely Marianne, Marianne, thanks so much for saying hello to me at Ikea. I, after seeing me, she had some little sprinkly tears in her eyes, which really touched me. But she said that they got rid of the candy bins quite a while ago. She called it the candy wall. And while they still offer candies, it's not quite the selection it used to be. Back then, as I recall, there was at least a couple dozen different types of candies that you could choose from. And while I am not a personal fan of licorice, particularly salmiak or salmiaki, the salty type of licorice, lots of my Nordic friends are. So I did pick up some licorice as well to give it a taste. I'm always open to trying things yet again because maybe my taste buds have changed. Maybe, maybe I will like it. At any rate, let's go ahead and taste Ikea. So while I went for candy, I did find some other things that I had never seen before, including these. These are veggie hot dogs. They're called Korv Moj, Moj, I don't know how to pronounce that. But did you know sausages, specifically hot dogs, are very popular in the Nordic Scandinavian regions? And this is a veggie version made with vegetables, grains, spices, and naturally flavored, fully cooked. These types of hot dogs often tend to be very long as well. So let's cook ourselves a veggie dog, shall we? Gotta love that packaging. It's very cheery, isn't it? So let's take one of these out. Oh, I was expecting it to be longer. Hmm. So there's a veggie dog and it looks like a veggie dog. That's great. It's not trying to look like a hot dog, which I think is great. Not trying to be meaty, lots of kale and carrots in there. That's what I read was the ingredients. Kale, cooked red lentils, quinoa. I mean, that sounds fabulous. So I'm gonna pop this into my preheated 350 degree oven for about eight to 10 minutes or until everything is nice and warm. As I mentioned, these are pre-cooked. So great little snack, right? So while the hot dog is cooking, let's taste some candy. I love these bags. These are really great when you go stay overnight at a friend's house. Really great for carrying linens, like big comforters. Love it. All right, so got some candy. These are little individually wrapped chocolate bars. This one's called Beloning. This is almond and caramel in a chewy base covered with chocolate, milk chocolate. And this one is Beloning too, but this one has an oat biscuit. This one looks more like a Kit Kat. And then here is what has replaced the pick and mix. Bags of candy now. So sadly we cannot get our individual servings, which was a bummer. I remember seeing skull shaped candies, spirals of licorice, salty, salty ones and not as salty ones. And the reason why I remember this is my mother-in-law loves the salty licorice. So I'd always pick up some salty licorice for her, but they still do have licorice, two different types. This is the Lorde Gossig, this is the sweet, and this is the salty. So let's just make our own mix. Let's begin with, this is Lorde, Lorde Gossig. I have good luck trying to pronounce any of these things, but here's this one, and this is an assorted mix, of kind of like gumdrops. Oh, that smells lovely. It smells like, like a berry mix. Look at that. So let's dump all those in. 
<laughs> oh, they're so cute. We've got hearts and circles and these look like little, oh, look, these are little moose heads. Wait, focus. Look, these are little moose heads. Those are adorable. Ingo the sweet licorice, wow. Look how shiny those are. Definitely smells like anise. Smells like the black licorice, like a black jelly bean. These, these are cute. These are gummies and strawberry, black currant, blueberry, and raspberry. Oh, I think those are more hearts. And then we've got these. These look like they're cola flavored. Dump those in. Oh, they're the mousse as well. Look, but these ones do not have any sugar on them. Right? They're kind of plain as opposed to these ones. And these are the salty licorice. Ooh, and they have a different shape. Look at these. Ooh, these look chewy. Oh my gosh, they almost look like pieces of, of cable wiring that have been snipped. Sour candies are also apparently very popular in Sweden as well. I'm hoping some of these will be sour. Oh, mm-hmm, sour. This is sour cola. And let's pour those in. What are these? I'm not sure. Oh, I think these are like little Viking ships. And then my last bag is assortment of sweet and sour gummies. Doesn't say what flavors. Great, I love sour candies. There's our homemade pick and mix. Great. Alrighty, let's give our candies a taste. First one I grab is one of these little hearts. Here we go. It's a Mmm. Great soft yet chewy texture, first of all. It's sticky, has a density to it, a little bit chewy and sweet. But the raspberry flavor is a little bit different than what you would find here in the States. A little bit more natural tasting. Good. All right, now that we're on a heart kick, let's try a lighter pink heart. Mmm, sticky. Same exact texture. This one tastes like strawberry. Mm hmm. Pretty standard, familiar strawberry flavor. Good. Let's try one of these little round buttons. Mmm. That has a firmer texture. Mm hmm. I actually prefer this texture better. It's a little bit firmer and less sticky on your teeth. And in terms of flavor, I'm not really sure what flavor that is. It's kind of a mysterious berry flavor. Let's try a mousse. This is a granulated sugar covered mousse. Let's give that a taste. Mmm, mmm, cola. Mm-hmm, ooh, I like it. Great cola flavor. If you've ever had the Haribo cola gummies, same exact flavor, really great. A little bit tart, I like that a lot. Let's compare that with the one that has no sugar on it. Mmm, mmm, very different. Mm-hmm. The one that doesn't have any sugar on it has the same texture as that little pink round circly cheek one. A little bit drier, not as sticky. Good cola flavor, but not as cola-y as the other one. But this is the best cola candy I've ever had. I'm not really a huge fan of cola candy, but the little moose heads from Ikea, the ones that are dusted in sugar, those are delicious. Alrighty, let's taste one I know I probably won't like. This is a black licorice. This is the sweet licorice. Here we go. Tadakimasu. Ooh. What a great texture. Wow. So there's little holes in there. And the texture of that is phenomenal. Really soft, tender, and look, you can peel it apart. Look at that. It's really fun. The texture is black licorice, so it's anise, but the texture is so nice. It's chewy and stretchy and tender. The best licorice I've ever had. I don't even like black licorice. I don't really like this, but I like this textural experience a lot. It's like biting through a bunch of 
wires. Like if you were to bite through some <laughs> wiring that comes into your house, I imagine that this would be what it'd be like in a delightful way. All right, now I need to taste something to get that flavor out of my mouth. It's anise and also earthy. It's not just anise. All right, let's try this white one. Let's give that one a taste. Mmm, I like that texture. Ooh, this one's a sour one. Mmm. Whoa. It's very strange after having the licorice. This is sour, but not too sour. I would say the level of a Sour Patch Kid. The flavor, I'm not really sure what the flavor is. I'm still tasting a lot of licorice. Might be some kind of citrus. Can't really tell. It's not really pineapple, but I still taste the licorice, but I like the sour intensity. Let's try one of the boats. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Those are great. A little less sour than a Sour Patch Kid, but really great cola flavor. Best cola gummies I've ever had. Delicious. Uh, let's see. Let's try another one that's supposed to be sour. This one's got more of a yellow color to it. Mm-mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. -mm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that one a lot. I'm a big fan of citrus flavors. Love, love, love citrus. And that's a nice zingy lemon. Mm-hmm. With a nice bit of sourness without being too sour. But the texture is similar to all the others similar to a Sour Patch Kid. Very fresh and soft, tender, yet chewy and sticky. I have to say right off the bat, all of these candies are super fresh. So I think that's one possible thing that you could criticize about a pick and mix is the freshness of the candy because they are sitting in bins, they're exposed to a lot of air and they can oxidize. So your candy may not be as fresh, but individually packed like this, the candy is super, super fresh. I haven't tried one of these yet one of those taste. Mm. Ooh, that's black currant. That's delicious. Chewy, not sour, sweet. Mm. Very great, intense, very flavor. This one's really great. All right, save the best for last. I'm gonna try one of those. This is the salty licorice. Let's see how it goes. Mm. Mm. This one has a firmer texture, a little bit leatherier in terms of texture. Mm. Mm. Salty, significantly salty. I still don't like it, but it's somewhat palatable to me. For me, the aftertaste of these kinds of candies is a bit like fake sugar, like aspartame. It has a kind of a chemical sweet aftertaste for me, which I, I don't like. These are not very strong. If you like a really salty salmiyaki, this is not very strong. It's salty and black licorice-y, but it's not overpowering. There are many, many more that are much, much stronger, so pretty mild. I still don't like it, but yeah, not bad. Alrighty, so now I have a great big bowl of pick mix that I can share with all of my friends because there's no way I could eat all this. My kids are gonna enjoy picking through it though. All right, let's grab the hot dog. Ooh, our hot dog cooked up very nicely. It's kind of sweating a bit. It smells good. Place our hot dog right into a bun. Now with our hot dog, I also picked up some Ikea ketchup and mustard. Look at these bottles, aren't they great? Love the graphic nature of these bottles. Very simple red bottle for ketchup with a tomato and yellow bottle for the mustard. All right, I'm gonna give these a shake so I don't get ketchup and mustard blood on my first squeeze. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, you wanna make sure you hear them sloshing around. Oh, I also got these, Rostad look. I got these onions too. So let's add some of those first. These look great. Hear how crunchy they are? Mmm. Great onion flavor. Now we're gonna add our ketchup. Ooh, this is a little bit lighter in color. It's not as red 
as the ketchup that we have here in the States. Looks a little thicker too. All right, now mustard. Ooh, whoa. I was expecting it to be this yellow. It is not, look at that pale color of mustard. What? All right, let's give the mustard a taste on our finger. Mmm, it's a little bit sweet. Mm-hmm, not spicy, but sweet, mustardy, not very vinegary, like a French's mustard. Mmm, all right, let's try the ketchup. Just on my finger. Whoa, that's a lot of ketchup. Mmm, very tomatoey. Mm-hmm, different than our ketchup here. Not as vinegared, more tomatoey, and a little bit sweet. Interesting. Alrighty, there's my Ikea hot dog, veggie hot dog. Let's give this a taste with fried onions, Ikea mustard, and Ikea <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> Tadaki moms. Hmm. First off, those veggie dogs taste like vegetables. I'm surprised, but delightfully so. It's not trying to be a hot dog or faux meat. It very much tastes like kale, carrots, vegetables, and the onions go really nicely. You get a little crunch there. The texture is a little bit mushy, I have to say. You don't get that nice kind of snap or chew or any kind of meaty-like texture, but it's not trying to be a faux meat by any means. It's just a veggie dog. There you can see all the vegetables that are in there. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. The flavorings are pretty subtle. There's a little bit of spice in there, definitely seasoned with salt and pepper. And yeah, it's not bad. But if you're looking for something that's meat-like, this is not it. But nice to have vegetarian options. And when you start adding condiments to it, it definitely feels a little bit more like a hot dog. Definitely like the fried onions. I can think of a lot of applications for these just simply as a garnish on salads and things like those. These for me are a little bit of more of an acquired taste because they're a little bit different than what I am used to, but really love the iconic packaging. With my hot dog, let's have some chips. Now, Marianne recommended these to me. So excited to taste these. She said these are delicious and these were $3.99 a bag. And this is the Festlig and this is potato chips with salt. So I am definitely a plain potato chip person. Let's take those out. Ooh, these look like kind of like kettle cooked chips, which are my favorite. And then these are sour cream and onion. Delicious. I also like this flavor. And these are the only two flavors they had at my location. I think that's the only two they make. Okay, let's taste a plain chip first. Here we go. Mmm. Those are fantastic. Really great toasted nutty potato flavor. Mm-hmm. Mmm. And a wonderful kind of interpretation of a kettle cooked chip. Thin and crunchy, but not too thick. Some kettle cooked chips for me are so hard and thick and crunchy, they almost like cut the inside of my mouth, but these are not. This is a nice little kind of happy medium between like a very, very thin Lay's chip, which are a little too delicate for me, and the crunch of a kettle cooked chip. Mm. Very good nutty potato flavor as well. That was a plain, delicious. Let's try the sour cream and onion. Mmm. Those are good as well, but different than the sour cream and onion that you might be used to if you live in the States. Mm hmm The onion flavor is more subtle, and there isn't this prevalent, like, addictive MSG, I am guessing laden powderiness that is all over <laughs> sour cream and onion chips here in the States that I just cannot stop eating them. It's not as dairied. Mm. Mm-hmm. The potato still really shines through. These chips are great. 
I really, really like them. Of the two, I think I like the plan a little bit more, maybe because it would match with more things to eat, but. Delicious, especially if you like a crispy style potato chip with full potato flavor. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, now that we have salty, let's have some sweet. Here are the two chocolate bars I mentioned earlier. And this is the Lunig. This is the almond and caramel on a sweet, chewy base. This sounds like it might be like a Milky Way, but with almond. Lovely. And we'll cut that. Oh yeah, look, kind of looks like a Snickers, right? Alrighty, let's give that a taste. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa. I also taste some coconut. Hmm. At first I'm like, wow, that's kind of like a Mars bar. But then I tasted some coconut. So it's a little bit like an almond joy. I actually don't like that. Um, I think it's because of the coconut I taste. Does it have coconut in it? I don't know that it does. Sugar, almond, maybe it's the almond flavor, but um, I'm not actually a huge fan of that. I thought I'd like it. I like the texture, the caramel's nice and chewy, and then almonds are kind of crushed up, but I, I don't care for that. I'm sort of shocked. Here's what looks like a Twix. <coughs> Very similar to a Twix. Let's give that a go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Very similar to a Twix. You've got a nice chewy caramelly layer, milk chocolate on the outside, but the cookie base is different. This one's a little bit more shatteringly crunchy as opposed to like a biscuit kind of light crunch, but still delicious. Really nice kind of dairy milky finish on the end. Yeah, like those. I'm surprised by this one though, man. Finally, let's do this one. This is a chocolate mousse. Isn't that great? So not only do you get your chocolate, but you get to assemble it too. Mousse are so cool. I saw my first mousse in Alaska and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a large animal. They're like as tall as horses. They're incredible. All right, there we have it. Beautiful, edible puzzle, I love it. Now it shows you quickly how you can put it together in very typical Ikea fashion. So we take the body of the mousse and we place it on the feet. Oh, fits beautifully. And then we add the antlers right in there. Does it fit? Yes. Fits together beautifully. Wow. Very happy with that construction. Just toppled it over. Looks great. Mousse chocolate. Alrighty, gonna have to give its antler a bite. Here we go. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Quite sweet, good snap, but pretty decent milk chocolate quality. Much better than a lot of chocolate bunnies that I've had at Easter. Very sweet though, but it is milk chocolate and you get to put it together in the shape of a mousse. <laughs> Alrighty, the last thing we're gonna taste is this. And this is a cake that I found in the frozen food department. It's based on the Dame Candy. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Dame, Dime. And it's a candy bar that has little bits of toffee in it. And this is a cake version. So you don't have to do any baking. You just take it out of the freezer and let it thaw for half an hour or so. And that's it, we have dessert. Sounds beautiful, right? Alrighty, let's see. Whoa, it's not even wrapped in any plastic at all. It's just like that, just in the box, <laughs> like this. Whoa, look at that. Amazing. Alrighty, let's give this a slice. Wow, couldn't be any easier. Slices beautifully. This is like the perfect cake for company. Whoa, look at that, how perfect. It's so stinking cute. All right, let's give that a taste. 
And this is baked by Almondy, the Swedish cake bakery. Mmm. Mmm. Very, very sweet. Tastes like a candy bar. But as you chew it a bit, you get the little kind of graininess of almond along with the flavor of almond. And then it becomes less sweet, but it has a nice little crunch of toffee. Mmm. On the top of the cake, there's definitely an almond meal texture in your mouth, a little bit of graininess, but delicious. You don't have to do anything. You just let this sit on your counter for a half an hour and you've got cake. Dame inspired cake. Delicious. Dame, dime, dime inspired cake. Scrumptious. All right, my lovelies, there you have it, my little taste of Ikea. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my other Ikea taste tests. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Okay, just one more taste of cake. Oh wait, is you eating this? Probably. Mm, delicious. Gluten free!